Hey guys, this is Haku, and I am bringing you Chapter 11 in Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus on Hard Mode. This chapter has two intense boss sequences, one involving a set of two tanks. The two tanks are manned by a gunner and a helicopter. Uh, the boss fights are a little bit tricky if you don't have the exact techniques down, but I will be showing you a quick, easy, and effective way to deal with both of the boss fights. Just like in Chapter 10, the enemies in this chapter are the uh, Vigorian army soldiers. S the same way that angles applied in the last chapters apply here. You do not want to jump towards or roll at the soldiers in a direct way. You want to approach them in an angle. You can see right there I tried to roll directly towards a soldier and it ended up in unavoidable damage. As long as you approach them with angles or with immunity active, you should be fine in all cases. You still have both the rapid-fire soldiers who take time to reload after a set period of time and the rocket launcher soldiers. Here you have two enemy soldiers and turrets who will continually fire at you. You have a golden scarab here on the left. This scarab is a little bit easy to miss if you are hastily moving into the area and you notice that both of these gunmen are firing at you. What you want to do is stay at a mid to long range away from them. Do not approach the tank yet. You want to try to take out both of the gunners before you start the next spawns in the tank. After you've taken out the two gunners, approach the tank and start killing off the remainder of the soldiers. Here I noticed that the game has a couple of landing ult essence bugs. It seems like there are periods of time where you will absorb the essence and not gain the charge ult that would result from it normally. Here you can see I get the charge ult off, I release, and I should have gained a period of immunity. However, it uh, never resulted. Um, so there are just a couple of strange areas and strange, I guess, bugs where you won't get, like for instance, that there will be a blue essence coming up. I pick up the blue essence, and instead of getting either a uh, health bonus from it or a charge from it, I gain absolutely nothing from it. So there are just a couple strange things that, like, like that, that I can't quite explain or know why they happen. And all I can say is, hey, it's a bug in the game. They happen from time to time. You would think with how many times they've released this game that they would have fixed all of those problems, though. Anyway, I digress. Getting back to the chapter, you get a new type of arrow in this box right here. The explosive arrows are super effective versus humanoids. They deal heavy amounts of damage to basically everything in this chapter that has flesh and bone. Um, and you can basically fire off unlimited amounts of them because there are canisters containing them throughout the rest of the chapter. Right here, you're going to want to equip the dragon sword if you haven't already. Uh, coupled with that, I noticed there were enough uh, Life of the Gods that I had picked up in order to gain an additional health boost. You can see in comparison to the start of the game, Ryu's health starts to get much more intimidating and large as the game goes on. Uh, I believe with this particular health boost it reaches twice the length that it was at the start of the game. In this uh, particular area there is a very easy way to get the golden scare. There's an easy way and there's a hard way and I'm going to show you the easy way. What you do is you move towards this uh, boxcar here and what you're going to want to do is wall jump towards it, and then as Ryu does his flip up, you're going to want to use a power technique with your dragon sword. Here, if you run at the wall perfectly, do a wall run, jump, use your square air technique, 
and then immediately after, use your uh, triangle air technique. Ryu can uh, sort of glitch this area, and you can gain access to the top part without ever needing to spawn the sentry bots or need to flip the lever in order to start the uh, power in the area. So, I attempted that particular exploit many times in this version of the game and it seems like it doesn't work as well as it did in the original Ninja Gaiden. So, I am not 100% sure if that exploit works. I just wanted to point it out and show the location of the area, so that way you can try it if you so desire. This chapter is riddled with life of the gods everywhere. Uh, they are all over the place. More locations to come up as the chapter progresses along. Here, what you should do as these robotic flying creatures pop out is just use uh, jump arrow shots and take them out as they get close to you. If you use a jump arrow shot when they're at too long of a range, you will be unable to actually hit them as Ryu won't aim. If that's the case, you can actually uh, zoom in and fire at them if you so desire. However, I think it is a little bit easier to just allow the enemies to come straight to you, jump, fire at them, Ryu will automatically aim and take them out. Yeah, I think it's the easiest way. It's nice to hang out on this stairwell right here and just continually fire arrows as there is a box of arrows uh, right at the bottom of the stairs so you can refill at any t point or time when you need to. Uh, this brings up the second uh, new arrows that you get in the chapter, the APF SDS cores. Uh, these arrows do high amounts of damage to mechanical creatures. So the explosive arrows should be used on humanoids and fiends, whereas the uh, APF SDS cores should be used against uh, any mechanical creatures that you run into. They are super effective versus the tank boss that is coming up in the very near future. When you flip this switch, it activates the power in the area, and the general idea is you're going to be jumping back and forth from uh, moving, uh, well, just moving platforms that are in the center area. Uh, you have to make it across to the other side where there is not a stairwell or any stairs to let you get up into the higher area. This allows you to access the control room for this particular uh, warehouse. You can see here, you just use normal jumps, there's no need to use roll jumps or anything like that, and it's quite simple to make it across the platforms. It is important to notice the timing of your jumps, and just make sure that you're at maximum velocity in order to ensure the highest rate of success as you jump. Occasionally that leads to, you know, missed timings with falling, but it's okay. This platforms, platforming section is a little bit strange if you've never gone through it before. However, you know, once you have it down, you've got it down, so you can just move right along. This room contains the map for the uh, military supply base, and coupled with that, there is a keycard on the desk. This keycard lets you access the next area. Uh, right here, I just am checking around the room really quickly to make sure that there's nothing that I might be misplacing or missing. be kind of funny if there was, though. The key card is used right up here. It opens a shutter door and allows you to access the next area. I switch back to the Dragon's Claw and Tiger's Fang in order to take out the mobs. You're going to be fighting a series of both types of soldiers. You can use the train to cut off line of sight if there are too many rocket soldiers on one particular side. Simply switch to the other side and profit. Again, like always, you want to make the rocket soldiers your highest priority. Then use the essence that they drop in order to land ults on the normal soldiers.
just continue that process and it's fairly simple. There are a couple periods of time when you will have multiple rocket launcher soldiers up at a time. There could be as many as three or four. And it, when that's the case, just move to one side of the train where there is the lowest amount of soldiers and then take out one at a time. Uh, dodging multiple rockets when there are four at a time is difficult. There you can see if you don't use angles, if you just roll and jump directly into one of these soldiers, they will always end up uh, doing something that involves un uninterruptible damage on you. So again, it's best to always approach from an angle unless you are flying swallowing. And if that is the case, then they'll either block or do some other thing to... Or they'll either block or you will land damage, so that's all that's important. If they do block, they will still be stunned, and it will give you enough time in order to set up another uh, attack. Uh, the rocket soldiers are very nice, especially in this area, if you're low on health, because they have an incredibly high drop rate of blue essence. So if you are low on healing items, low on health, throw on the dragon armlet that allows you to absorb extra essence, um, uh, extra health from blue essence, and with that on, it's quite nice. You can fill up on HP pretty easily. There you can see as you, you get closer to the rocket soldiers, their chance to hit you, their accuracy, is much higher. So your distance is actually, actually proportional to their chance to successfully hit you with the rocket. Even if you're rolling and moving as quickly as you possibly can, once you enter a certain distance, they will hit you no matter what. I consider this save point one of the most essential save points in the game. Stock up on healing items if you are low at all. This next sequence it can be one of the most frustrating sequences in the game if you are not properly prepared. I highly recommend having at least 7 to 8 minor healing elixirs with 2 to 3 normal healing elixirs. Here you are going to be fighting two different uh, tanks. The tanks are going to be manned by gunners, and the gunners will respawn in the tank after a short amount of time if you do successfully kill them. If you just use jump arrow shots, Ryu will continually hit the tank, but he will not hit the gunner. In order to hit the gunner, you have to wait for a period of time when the gunner is not actively firing and the tank has just fired one of its own tank shots in order to zoom in, aim at the gunner, and fire an explosive arrow. If you use APF SDS cores, it will take several shots in order to kill the gunner, whereas I believe explosive arrows, explosive cores, will kill the gunner in one shot. Whenever you take out the gunner, it will leave you a short amount of time where you don't have to worry about the additional gunfire. The pattern that you should follow for this boss is generally two arrow shots, then you wait for a tank fire. You can sometimes get off three, but if you are greedy every single time, there is a very high chance that on your third arrow shot, as you are landing, the tank shot will be fired and you won't have enough time to get out of the way. Move across the tank at, along the radius of a circle. Treat the tank, regardless of wherever it is, as the center of a circle, and then you're going to want to move around the outside of it. There you could see I got a little bit greedy with my arrow shots. I decided to try to fire one off. As I was in mid-air, the tank fired the shot at the ground, and then right as I landed, that's when the arrow fell. It's important to make notice of the two arrow uh, redistribution areas that are in this particular spot, and just fill up on arrows whenever you run out. Continue to uh, just move around in circles when the second tank comes out. Be patient. Be very careful as w when you notice that the tank has started to move its main gun. When that happens, immediately switch into roll jumping. The tank will wait until its main gun is in the direct line of sight of Ryu, and then once that direct line of sight is reached, it will fire. 
So regardless of how quickly you're moving or how quickly or how slowly you're moving, the tank will not fire at you unless it has direct line of sight with its gun. So if you're at a huge radius, again, treating the tank like a circle, you can actually make it so the tank will never fire a shot at you if you never stop moving. If you choose to not take out the top gunner, like I have done so in this chapter, the you will take some unavoidable damage, but most of the damage will actually be avoided because as you are roll jumping, the gunner will not be able to keep up with you, and when you land on the ground, you should immediately be returning to a block stance. Continue rolling, jumping, and firing arrows, max two at a time, just to play cautious, and you will be able to get past these tanks without taking a huge hit to your essence and healing items. Uh, restock on arrows, again, as you're leaving this area. It's not necessary, as there are two more boxes that are coming up, but it's generally a good idea to just be maxed on arrows for the next upcoming boss. Here you can see a, another tribute to Team Ninja. This is the second one that I have come up on in the game. The first being in Tyron, along the blue path that you have to uh, ju wall juggle up in order to gain access to. It just refills your health and nimpo like it did before. If you are feeling heavily pressured on the tank boss, you can use your upgraded Art of the Inferno in order to take out large chunks of, H of its HP, and then simply return to the uh, Team Ninja statue and have your nimpo and health refilled for free. I think Team Ninja felt bad for gamers and put two save points in very, very close proximity to each other, simply because of how difficult this boss is. Starting off the boss, you have two rocket launcher mobs that are right next to each other, which can be a little frustrating to get to. Uh, roll jump towards them in a zigzag pattern and wait for their second shot to go off after you've entered the area, before you attempt to engage them. If you try to engage them too quickly, just after they've fired one shot, typically as you get closer to them, your range is such that they will hit you no matter what. So keep a slight distance away from them for a short period of time, and wait for their second shot, and then immediately switch back. This is the second boss of the chapter. The helicopter will fire normal machine gun fire at Ryu. This particular spot right here is the best time to land damage. When the helicopter goes underneath the overpass, overpass, switch to the side that it will be coming up out of, and just continually do jump arrow uh, fire shots at it, and profit, you know, deal a lot of HP damage at that point. You want to make note that the uh, missiles that it fires are heat-seeking missiles. So you have to play tricks on them and make special notes of how to move properly. If Ryu is continually moving in one direction right as all of the missiles fire, generally they will have a... Uh, the missiles will learn how quickly you're moving and alter their trajectory in order to hit you. So the idea is when the missiles first are fired off, you want to be holding somewhat still, and then as they approach you, you want to start moving as quickly as you can, meaning using roll jumps. When that happens, you will generally be able to avoid all of the missiles. So wait for a small period of time when the missiles are initially fired, and then immediately after that small period of time, as the missiles begin approaching you, start moving as quickly as you possibly can. The missiles will not be able to turn quickly enough because of their high speed, and you will be able to successfully dodge them. You can notice in these sequences there, I was able to dodge every single one of the missile fires, except for the last one and it was because on every single one of the missile fires I had timed it out properly and wasn't moving in such a quick 
rate that the missiles could properly adjust themselves to my speed. Here we can see Ryu finishes the helicopter off with grandiose fashion, and we start moving into the next part of the chapter. Unfortunately, we have a very difficult sequence coming up in the chapter, so again, I recommend dropping by the save point and saving just in case something terrible happens. Right here, you're going to want to uh, bird flip up this wall, pick up the scarab at the top, switch to the Vigorian flails, and then open the treasure chest located at the bottom. The reason why you want to do this is because this treasure chest is full of lots of ghost fish. And the Vigorian flails, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, are the best weapon for taking out ghost fish without any issues or problems. You have two waves of them that will spawn from the treasure chest. It's great because you will fill up heavily on HP and gain a decent amount of essence. Right now, if you have obtained 25 scarabs and you are on hard mode, you will be able to pick up the Diabloharo, which is a great sword for taking out fiends and humanoids and heavier creatures. It's actually quite comparable to the Unlabored Flawlessness. The Unlabored Flawlessness is still the better sword. The Diabloharo just has an interesting semi-long range ult versus the Unlibered Flawlessness has a very short range ult or I guess the Unlibered Flawlessness has a 360 degree uh, inferno style ult that you can uh, abuse to take out enemies in groups versus the Diablo Haro has a forward conal, fr uh, conal ultimate which is great for taking out enemies that like to jump away from you, like the uh, fiends that are coming up in the aqueducts. So, using a Diabloharo to farm essence in the aqueducts is actually a great way to make a pretty decent amount of essence. Here, you're going to be using your arrows to take down the nine uh, satellite relays on top of the radio tower. The satellite relays become harder and harder to hit because as you progress and take down additional satellites, more rocket launcher mobs start to spawn on the tower. The idea is you want to wait for a wave of uh, rocket fire to drop and then you want to try to take out one of the satellite relays then you're going to switch back into rolling away from the rocket fire and trying to avoid them. I tend to like to wait for two waves of rocket fire just so I can ensure that it will be safe to take a shot. If you see a rocket being fired directly at you, immediately fire an arrow and uh, take the rocket out with the arrow. That is a slight saving grace that is quite useful for this particular spot. If you get trapped in a corner like this, it is very possible to get chained and caught in the corner if you're not cautious and careful. This particular sequence is all about timing and patience. You have to have a somewhat intuitive approach to know to knowing when the rockets are going to be fired, and then you have to immediately switch into your bow and be able to accurately fire at a long-range distance. Here I believe I only have one satellite relay left to kill. I get a little bit impatient and try to take it out just as quickly as possible while avoiding the rocket fire. You do have the option of taking out the uh, rocket soldiers that are on top of the tower, but that adds a different level of complexity to this challenge, and it takes quite a few more arrows and a lot more time. However, it will boost your kill score at the end of the chapter, so it might be worth doing it. Here we have another area full of the flying robotic laser creatures. Again, you're going to take them out the exact same way that you did before. Just use jump arrow fire shots. 
you want to be careful along this walkway because if they do successfully use their lasers on you, you will be knocked off of the uh, walk and end up down at the bottom. Here you have three rocket launcher mobs in very close proximity to each other and taking them out without using your arrow fire can be quite difficult. I previously thought that you could just leave the room, re-enter it, and the mobs would respawn, granting you the keycard access to the last room in the chapter. However, you have to take the elevator down, kill the mobs in the second to last room in the chapter, and then after that, return to the room that you were just in, take out another group of three rocket launcher mobs, and then you gain keycard access to the final room in the chapter. This is the second to last room, as I mentioned before, and that door right there is locked, needing a keycard, and I just explained how to get keycard access. It is... The game sort of forces you to go back up, so that is basically how the game lets you know that this is what you need to do. The door's locked. Hey, how about that? As you can see, there were two treasure chests in the last few minutes of the game that both contained both contained Life of the Gods. There, I thought that the mobs might have respawned in that room. I felt like I was a slightly low on the mob kill count for this chapter, seeing as I decided to skip killing all of the mobs that were on the tower. However, they did not respawn. Again, you just return to this room, you have another spawn of three rocket launcher mobs, and you just take them out with your arrow shots. It's the easiest, quickest way to do it. After you take out the last mob, you get the key card, the control room key, and now you return to the final room, and that sets up a sequence where Ryu will steal a train and you will end up back near the monastery. However, you will not be able to gain access to the monastery again, uh, seeing as everything is locked up and quarantined off. So you begin to travel underneath the city in the aqueducts, and the aqueducts is the best chapter in the game. I'll just go ahead and say it. Anyway guys, this brings us towards the end of chapter 11. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it.